To research Earth's climate history, scientists who study ice cores work hand-in-hand -hand with engineers to design a range of tools that meet their specific needs. One example of this collaboration can be seen in the design and development of ice core drills. Let's catch up with Jay Johnson and Tanner Kuhl, two engineers from the University of Wisconsin's Ice Drilling Design and Operations Group, as they test the newly designed Blue Ice Drill. This is what we're calling the Blue Ice Drill, you can see here. It's a uh, fairly standard double barrel ice coring drill. This drill is specifically designed to take a nine and a half inch ice core, which is much larger than most of the drill systems use. And it's because of the demand by the scientists that they needed large quantities and large volumes of ice. Down at the bottom we have a core head that has three cutters. Those, the core head spins around and the cutters shave the ice and then transport the chips up the plates of the barrel between the two barrel sections. The inner barrel spins, the outer barrel stays stationary, and it's that difference uh, that actually drives the chips to the top and gets them out of the hole so that we can then take the core. What we're going to do now, we're going to use the winch to lower the drill down. So in order to uh, keep this drill from spinning in the hole, because this is just a swiveling rope connection here, we have to put a handle on the top of this, and then one person holds that, and that counteracts the cutting action. So I'll be doing the anti-torque of the drill. Tanner will be lowering it and doing the feeding. So the switches here are built right into the handles of this anti-torque car. Here, we'll start it up. Alright, so now that we've drilled a core, it's sitting down there on the bottom of the hole, it's still one solid column of ice that's connected to the ice below it. So we need to break that ice. To do that, we use this winch to pull up to 6,000 pounds. And in the pouring head of the drill are six spring-loaded, sharpened steel um, teeth that will spring in and bite the core, send a crack all the way across the top, breaking it off from the ice beneath it and then they'll capture it and hold it in the drill so that we can pull it up with the winch and bring it to the surface. So now we're going to separate the barrel so we'll be able to see the, uh, the core of the chips come out of it. So we're going to do our reverse spin on the barrel just to clean some of these ice chips up. Now the inner barrel is free and we can lift the drill up and uh, take the core barrel away. So now we'll lay this barrel down and pull the chips out and remove the core. So our plug that separates the chips from the core is connected by a string here. And these are the ice chips that we just drilled or created for the cutting process. So I'm just going to give the core a little bit of a push to disengage it from the core out here. And now it's free and I'll just tip the barrel up and I'll see it come out the other end. little core we just drilled. If this were uh, the actual in the field and using this for science, this would have been pushed out into a tray and saved. It would be a little bit more gentle with it, but for testing here, we're just pushing it out on top of the existing ice chips. So. Based on the results from the testing phase, Jay and Tanner will go back to their offices to redesign and optimize the drill before sending it to the field. The Blue Ice Drill's large diameter cores enable scientists to gather adequate volumes of trace methane gases and rare carbon dioxide isotopes to answer how and why these climate indicators have varied in the past. This drill is one example of how engineers, responding to scientists' research goals and constraints, can build designs that further our understanding of our world.